Hey, welcome to another lesson on Enterprise Java. In this section, we're going to be covering the uh, idea of EJBs, or Enterprise Java Beans. Java Beans that do your business logic. So this is where we're going. We're going to be building an EJB, which is basically a class with some special conditions, and we'll insert that into our controller method. So like injecting and including by an import look very much the same, but the uh, background process is a little different. And then finally, we'll create a timed event. So on a regular schedule, a business process can run. And we'll just make one called timer. Let's go back and look at the full stack of everything that is in an enterprise application. So the two blue arrows here indicate where we're working right now. So we're in the middle layers. So we're talking about the uh, business processes and uh, how to make certain pieces of your application load when they are required. First of all, let's ask ourselves, what is business logic? So business logic is the actual thinking part of your program. It's the portion that determines how data is transformed or calculated. Or you might have a workflow system. So we're all familiar with tracking a package. You can imagine the workflow behind a package. There is data that is created when you create an order. Somebody at the warehouse has a queue of orders that they have to pack. Once the warehouse worker tapes up the box, puts it on the conveyor belt, and scans it, there would be another process in the line for the delivery person. And then finally, they might ask you to sign at the door. And so all of that is required to be calculated somewhere. It's not necessarily on the front end. Is it better not be on the front end? Because the app that the UPS man is writing on his uh, scratch pad is different than the app that the man in the uh, warehouse is using with his barcode scanner. And then also the app that you're using on your phone or on your website is completely different altogether. But all three of those apps are likely talking to one of these business logic classes, which tracks an order from beginning to end. So you might have a bean or a class that keeps track of an order. So it asks you to add items to a shopping cart and add your address and do a payment completion. And so all of that would be considered business logic. So here's another example. A checkout system, as you can see, it's labeled step one through five. And so what we're going to be working on is thinking of a, of a Java class that would keep track of the steps that have been done and the data that's been entered. And it would be uh, not necessarily the control of the uh, form, but the, uh, the logic behind it. Sometimes business logic uh, relates to the types of decisions that you make. And so you create a table like this. So is your destination far away? Is the, is the transaction more than $80? Is the package heavy? Or should we provide free delivery or not even deliver at all? And so the rules would be simple to program in an if and then statement kind of a way, but it has to go somewhere. And so the code that would run this is called our business logic. So in our diagram of a N layer architecture, we would be programming here in the third box down, the orange layer. And so this layer is all about handling and executing business logic or business rules. Notice the technologies that we have listed here specifically on the left. We're going to be using design by contract. In Java, that means we're going to be using interfaces. So you think of a business rule and you think of rules that are like constraining your business and you want to have true or false statements come out of it so that you can have a, a, a consistent decision process. And so businesses can apply to people and processes and corporate behavior and legal requirements, capacities, schedules. And so for example, no check credit is performed on returning customers. So there's an if statement in your code. So you would check to see if there's enough money in your account before you're allowed to withdraw. That's a business decision. So you can't buy items with a credit card if the authorization doesn't come through. So all of this programming goes on in these EJBs. So here's another view of some of the layers. So the presentation layer is a web page. You're thinking about buttons and things to fill out and actions from the mouse. Here in the logic layer, we're talking about things like a rule that says, give me a list of all sales that were made last year. Or if it's coming back from the database, you might say, add all the sales together. 
So that's, that's where we're at right now. The data tier is where we would just have the queries. So this is mostly probably SQL and we're talking about getting columns and counting the number of rows in a table. So here's some code that might look like a business object. So I have a class that I created called cart. You can see it's got some properties and I've added one method here called add. And so it would add an item to the cart. It would talk about the capacity of your cart and it would talk about the price that's the total. So that's all working away in our business area. So why would you want to put all your business logic in a separate class by itself? For instance, we have a class and a method is called calculate tax. And uh, why would you want to put that there and not necessarily in the controller or in the uh, database objects or even as many people would like to do is put it in the front end. So one reason that's obvious is that you would have more than one way to access your business. So first of all, you'll probably think of a web page as your first and primary way that your app runs. It seems like a website is the most uh, easy way to build. But you probably want to have your customers and other warehouse people working on mobile devices. And so we want to talk to the same business logic even though we're on a completely different front end. Or you might have an intermediate thing like a JSON service, a REST service. And that allows uh, third parties to use your data or different types of technology, like maybe a, a JavaScript application. Let's say you had a bidding system, maybe an auction. And so this, this class here looks like it's designed to accept a bid. It has a method called add bid. And it would be designed to keep track of the number of bids and maybe the highest bid. EJB is the name of this business logic. So Enterprise Java Bean is what EJB stands for. Uh, the business logic is the code that fulfills the purpose of the application. Here's the key term. It does not perform any of the display of the data. That's for presentation. And it doesn't directly talk to the database. That job is left to our database layer, our persistence layer. So what's a container? Well, it's a piece of software that manages the enterprise beans that are all given to it or assigned to it. So for each bean that you create, the container, the web server, is responsible for registering the object, providing remote interfaces for it, creating and destroying as necessary. You check for security to see if it's actually allowed to run, and you can manage its state. And so um, the server does a lot of work for us. And all we have to do is make sure that we, we uh, notate that it's an EJB. So there are other containers that you would find in uh, Java Enterprise. So the, the servlets and the JSPs, they're managed obviously by some software that automatically binds the data together with the forms on the page. And so that would be the job of the web container. And so we're going to be doing something similar, uh, taking advantages of what JBoss can do for us in managing these beans. A term here that we're going to see soon is called inversion of control, IOC. So it's a programming technique that allows for you to bind objects at runtime. And so it'll let you choose which, uh, which type of business logic you want. For instance, let's say you had a, um, a subscription service for streaming, like you're a you're a Spotify or a Pandora. You might have one business logic that is set for the free accounts and it automatically includes advertising. Or you might have a business logic that says I'm gonna schedule songs to be played for my user if, they've, uh, if they're a paying customer then there's no ads. And so we would want to have different business uh, related to the accounts depending on what kind of account it was. For testing purposes, you obviously don't want to hook up your application directly to the production database. And so you would probably just put in one line of code to say, hey, for the business logic on the testing environment, let's talk to the test server. If you're in production, then let's talk to the live server. And so a simple one line change can make your business logic work with one set of data or another. And so to create an object that is going to be working with CDI, we have a list of requirements here. So we'll come back to this list here when we start coding.
Here's an example of an enterprise Java bean that we're going to make. This line here says local or alternative will let us pick which uh, business class we want to run at runtime. And notice we're going to be using interfaces. So go back to your Java experience. Interfaces are kind of like coding by contract. You're making promises that when you implement a class, you're going to implement all the methods that are in that class. We're going to need an XML file that's going to tell us which enterprise Java bean is going to be used for this particular application. And so we'll see that in the coding. Just to do a recall, a review of what you might have remembered from what an interface is. So if you know what interfaces are, you can skip ahead. But if you need a review, here we go. So an interface is a blueprint for a class. It's a promise of what you're going to be able to develop. So the uh, class itself is the blueprint of an object. And then, of course, the instance of an object is the actual item that's in action. So here's, a, here's an interface. So the interface lists the properties, and it also lists the methods. But you notice there's no code. It just tells us that the method for this vehicle is going to include speed up, slow down, and show stats. That's the interface. Now, you can see what's coming is uh, the class called Bicycle. So Bicycle is a class that implements the vehicle interface. Now, in the interface, we made the promise that we're going to use speed up, slow down, and show stats. And you can see that I've actually created those methods here. Speed up, slow down, show stats. So that would define the class Bicycle. Now, once we have the class Bicycle defined, then we can make an instance of it. And so in my code, I would create a bicycle or an object of type bicycle, and I name it the letter B. Once we have B in existence, then we can call its methods and access its properties. So that's just a review of how interfaces work in Java. So once we have an EJB created, we're going to have some code that has the keyword inject. So inject is a lot like the word include. It allows you to access um, a component that is not within this class. Notice we are talking about the interface, so not the con concrete implementation of the class. The reason why is because we can have more than one version of our business service, and we can uh, simply tell it in our XML file which one that we want to be using. Okay, so that's a lot of overview. Now let's get coding, and we'll make some of this work in our application.